Please welcome on stage Dr. Rudolf Solacher from Siemens and Martin Röss from Givaudan. Okay, uh, let's uh, start with some first uh, trends in, uh, uh, in the industry which we observe and uh, which can be addressed with MindSphere. So, for example, globalization uh, leads to more competition and as such also to tighter profit margins, meaning that uh, industry players try to uh, reduce waste, for example, uh, or reduce even their assets. Um, a second trend which we observe is that there's a decreasing investment in uh, production infrastructure and also know-how, meaning that uh, as an industry player, you have to optimize your asset utilization, for example. Uh, there's also, you, you probably have heard it in different other tasks, that there's a, there's a trend towards doing more and more sophisticated analytics, uh, even across the whole value chain. In this case, in food production, we are talking about food production. Uh, this means that in order to do that, you have to modernize your plants uh, in order to keep on with the standards. And there's an increasing influence on, uh, of social media on your bronze, especially the bronze concerning your product. And maybe some of you know how fast it can be that uh, you get some damage on your bronze. So this means that you're aiming at full transparency uh, on the ingredients and uh, the processes. And last but not least, we see fast changing um, consumer preferences and individualization. Also, this consumer behavior is changing. So you have to increase your innovation speed uh, and ideally through closed loop optimization along the value chain. Now, how can MindSphere help? Well, first of all, you simply connect uh, all your data, data sources uh, from your production and processes to the cloud, having them available at one point and being able to monitor all of them, you certainly can improve uh, your margin by identifying uh, weak points in your production, for example. Next step is you can uh, do predictive maintenance using condition-based monitoring using the data available in MindSphere. You can even connect uh, legacy uh, equipment uh, to MindSphere, making the, or integrating them or having an integrated view together with the greenfield plants. You can uh, get more transparency on the quali quality across the value chain by tracking and tracing and blockchain solutions. And finally, you can bridge the gap uh, from the consumer to the product uh, via MindSphere. Now, probably you have heard uh, a lot of MindSphere about what MindSphere basically is, and now let me uh, explain it a little bit more. Um, it's an open platform as a service, and it provides you with uh, connectivity solutions, products, software to connect all possible of data sources from the sensors to complete systems and databases. And on the other hand, uh, on the uh, up, uh, upper layer, there's an open app interface which allows you to program, program your own apps uh, or use existing apps which have already been developed by partners. Now, <clears throat> let's go a little bit into the digital twin uh, which we are using here. So the data in MindSphere should not be just deposited there, but they should be done, it should be done in a structured way. And the way how it's done is with digital twins. So first of all, you have the digital twin of a product, which in food industry typically consists of the product itself, so that its formulation in particular, its ingredients, but also the packaging. And this digital twin may also consist of not just, let's say, data sheet type data, but also simulation models, for example, to be used in product design and production design. And this brings me to the digital twin of the production, which includes all the components, its connection, how they are controlled, uh, so that you can, can model the whole processes and the setup, improving uh, your uh, commissioning, for example, 
or improving your production planning. And finally, when the product is produced, you're producing a lot of data during the production process, which add to the digital twin of uh, the product and can be used uh, by feeding them back into production and product design to improve both of them. Now, this was uh, within a factory, basically. Now, let's uh, look at the whole value chain. Now, with the data which are available on the fields, you can monitor plant growth uh, or the, animal, the status of the animals. You can uh, monitor storage conditions or transport conditions. You can do remote maintenance and operation with the data which are available, especially the data about the machines. You can do production planning uh, using all the information I've just so shown about the product itself, about the status of your machines. Um, I already mentioned uh, uh, transport, but uh, you can even use the available information about your production and the products to simplify the exchange with authorities. For example, when you have to do an audit or export control. And uh, finally, you can provide some information to consumers, um, providing them with more information about the product or also getting back some feedback from them. And of overall, along the value chain, you can use this information to do tracking and tracing and uh, improve uh, sustainability and resource efficiency. Now, how do we do that uh, specifically? The idea is that uh, when we use MindSphere, every player along the value chain, here are the examples of a farmer, a producer, a retailer, and finally the consumer, have their own data spaces, isolated data spaces for the moment. And now they decide to share some specified data with their partners. For example, if the farmer is sharing machine data from, of his truck with the uh, truck producer, then this, he can uh, do remote maintenance or operation. Sharing data between the farmer and the producer allows for tracking and tracing and using the information in order to product planning at the producer. I have already mentioned the audits. Uh, and finally, of course, you can also uh, provide information to the consumer to improve trust on your production. Uh, for example, showing the resource consumption or how the food was produced. Now let me uh, mention one particular project which we are executing within EIT Food, uh, which is a large consortium of 50 partners and where this particular project is done with Chivondon and uh, Strauss, also partners in uh, EIT Food. Um, and we are addressing, we, we are really realizing a first version of this uh, uh, vision which I showed you, where we focus on Givondo as the supplier of flavor to Strauss, who is a producer of pudding in this case. And finally, uh, the pudding is sold to the consumer. So we can show all this uh, or, or a couple of these use cases which I mentioned before um, with the implementation we are doing with them. And uh, the idea is to share uh, a certificate of analysis of the flavor to Strauss as a producer. And at this stage, I want to hand over to Martin from Chivondon to start his presentation on his yeah. perspective. Thank you, Rudy. Good. First, maybe introduce Givadon. I don't know, probably think you don't know Givadon. We're the number one uh, supplier of flavors and fragrance around the world, which means that we're engaging the, the senses of a billions of people uh, around the world every day. Uh, we have uh, 148 locations, 64 production sites. We own about 25% of the flavors and fragments market and almost 14,000 employees uh, worldwide. So a real global company. And when you look at the flavor division, because that's where we're talking about uh, today, we are present in all the different sections of the food uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, and in this case, it's about dairy uh, working together with Strauss in this EIT uh, project. So then about the, the flavor production itself, to make you understand a bit of, about the, the process. 
liquid flavor production, it's all about uh, accurate dosing of the, the right ingredients in the, in the right sequence. It's a little bit like uh, cooking in your kitchen. Huh? It's, it's all about the accuracy. Uh, the process is partly automated, but it's mainly manual. And it's also, compared with other uh, food uh, production, it's, uh, it's low volume, it's uh, a high batch size variability. For instance, we produce five kilo batches, and in the same uh, factory, same day, 25,000 kilo batches. So that's the range we're operating in. And it's a high product mix. Uh, an average factory produces about 150 different products, batches every day. And that same products won't be produced somewhere else in that same month because we have a, a couple of thousand active products. Uh, well, the process is all about uh, a logistics part where you have to supply the, the right ingredients to the, to the shop floor. And the shop floor where people are mainly manually dosing, like on the, on the picture, dosing the ingredients, mixing it, uh, and then making sure it's packed off in, in the right uh, uh, container size. So we don't have system data like sensors on machines, etc. But we have a lot of system data around weighments, uh, which operator performed which uh, action, uh, at which, which station, uh, which weighment, all about material movements. So all these data are uh, in this digital twin. Uh, Specific data can be shared with the customer, like certificate of analysis. But the main part is uh, uh, for internal use. We can use it as for, for tracing, when we want to trace back how a pro uh, product has flown through uh, the production process. We can find that back for quality reasons, for instance, when there is a uh, request from a customer. Uh, and that can help, can help in root cause analysis. Also, we can track products, so when it's in the chain, we can quickly have an overview. Oh, this is the situation of this process order. And by combining data of a lot of process orders, you can map your, uh, uh, the situation in your production uh, 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 almost at a live uh, basis. And you can uh, use that to optimize production. Uh, and this tracking function can also, uh, apart from optimizing at the spot, making sure that you improve your planning on the long run and optimize on the long run. Good. Last well, remarks from you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Martin. And uh, I have only one last remark. I want to point your attention to another presentation we have here at the booth, where you can also see uh, a different solution on trusted traceability using blockchain technology. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, dear Rudy and um, Martin. Siemens, ingenuity for life.